on. Time to shine today, podcast varsity squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and we are. I'm super stoked about this one. This is my uh, sister from another Mista, the author of the Full Spirit Workout. Which, if you listen to the end, I have an awesome giveaway that my good friend Kate Ekman has given me permission, uh, and she actually ha- John Hancock the book to send out to you. But you have to listen to the end of this interview uh, to get that free book or have a chance to get that free book. And my friend Kate Ekman is the author of the Full Spirit Workout, a ten step system to shed your self-doubt, strengthen your spiritual core, and create a fun and fulfilling life. She has accolades that go on and on. You can check them out in the show notes. I love that she went to Penn State uh, University. Um, I've been to a whiteout, actually, which is just fantastic. She's a competitive swimmer. She's also a graduate, I believe, of Columbia University. She's passionate about mindfulness practices for both brain and body health. She's also a meditation teacher, a course creator for Insight Timer, the world's number one ranked free meditation app, which I'll put that in the show notes as well. And you can visit her at kateekman.tv and thefullspiritworkout.com. And Kate, thank you so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today podcast varsity squad. But first, Kate, what's your favorite color and why? I love the color purple because uh, when I think of purple, I think of lavender and the, the soothing comfort yes. relaxation that comes with that. And it's regal. And it's a mix between my two favorite colors, blue and red. And if you're watching here on um, on any of the video uh, podcasts, you, you can see that my friend Kate Ekman is just a beautiful woman, full of energy, <laughs> awesome rock star. But I want to kind of get a little bit to the origins, Kate, of where you kind of came through. I mean, you're an accomplished person. You know, you're an athlete, which we resonate there. Um, and you, but you kept on with the education. You coach high end of individuals. But what's our what's our roots? Yeah. So as a competitive athlete, I I swam competitively for 17 years and I knew how hard I had to train my physical muscles to compete at a high level for so long. And as I went about my life, like most people, I'm going to lovingly call everybody out. I was struggling. I, like many, was in the, the rat race on the hamster wheel. My life was all about the externals. That's where I got my validation. And I had two massive wake up calls, losing two loves to suicide in one year. And I thought there must be a way to train my attitudinal muscles and get really fit and strong on the inside, develop strong mental, emotional, and spiritual muscles. And so that's really been my my life quest to come up with the keys for the better way of living, not just for myself, but for everyone, because I believe we all have so many gifts and strengths to identify, leverage, and share. And, and, and we're really not utilizing our full potential. So that really is, is my passion. It's my purpose. And it's, it's what gets me out of bed, ready to rock and roll every morning. Is there a, like a fork in the road? My, you, you mentioned two suicides. My little brother took his life, so I get it. And then even to come on this show, thank you for donating to the Suicide Life Prevention Hotline, which all my guests do. Um, wh- what was that moment? Was that kind of the moment? Was the suicides that really made you start to flex your hustle muscle with your emotional and spiritual. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that you've experienced uh, the loss of love. Likewise of suicide. To you. It's um, it's such an epidemic and, and people are really uncomfortable yeah. talking about the topic. There's such a stigma. So I'm happy to be the face of this to help erase the stigma, even though it's really hard and heartbreaking work, as you know, and mm. you can get triggered and, and taken out and it, it, it is sad, but um, I, I'm really inspired by people who like you are taking the time to shine and um, despite it all showing up, not just for yourself, but for other people, but that certainly changed the whole trajectory of my life. And it wasn't just the pain of losing these two beautiful men, but it really was forcing me to look at myself in the way I was choosing to live my life. And it's like, oh my gosh, am I going to be in a moment of despair and, and not be in my right mind and make a poor choice? Cause that's all it takes is a moment. And so I'm really passionate about speaking so openly and vulnerably about this because everyone is experiencing so many painful emotions, especially this past year or two. So um, it's okay. And, and let's talk about it and share. And there really is no shame in it. You know, and I love it that you were very candid about it in your book. I believe it was chapter five, build your emotional muscles. And what, what I love that you kind of put in there was the emotional muscles on drugs. There's no fix. I believe that was the name of the little excerpt. And that totally stood out to me because I was like a, um, a, a Xanax guy, you know, it's just like something that make me cope. But I love that you put in there 
natural. Like you do things are naturally. So now I'm like a um, lemon balm and L-theanine person before I go to bed. And it really just allows me to wake up. What do you do? Do you practice that within your own life natural and really staying away from the chemically induced fixes or ba- they're not even fixes because they don't allow you to get into Bravo or, you know, B, A, B, C, and D, all the four sleep stages, right? Uh, when you're trying to get your rest and recovery, are, are you a person that really uses the natural to help you level up? Yeah. I, I mean, of course we all know this, right? It, this getting enough sleep, getting enough exercise, <clears throat> excuse me, the meditation. Uh, I'm a woman of faith, so I, I pray, but I, I do a practice that I invite all of your listeners to do starting today. And I call it my sit and stare time. And that's something where you do exactly what it says. You sit, you turn off all your noises, distractions. You need to be in a room quietly by yourself and stare out the window and check in with yourself as if you were a small child and, and, and ask, how are you doing? What do you need right now? How can I support you? You know, what's working, what isn't, and really take the time to listen. We all need to become more practiced at listening, not to the ego voice that tells us you're not good enough. You're not this enough. Why'd you say that dumb thing? I'm talking about to our inner wisdom, our higher self, God, spirit, universe, nature, whatever you want to call it, bring that, that, that wisdom from your head down into your heart, into your body and, and sit in that space. And I promise you uh, that is the natural high. You will, you will gain the insights, yes. the clarity, and, and really start to become more practiced at listening to that voice. And I love that you said that because I believe I'm a man of faith and everybody knows it. Um, small group leader at church, you know, and whatnot, but you know, it, God's voice is silence. It's like you hear it when you can sit and like you say, sit and stare um, and ask yourself the questions. How are you? What do you need? What can I do for you? And like you can actually during that sabbatical of your day, hear God's voice if you're actually listening to it, correct? Listening for it. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. And you, and you get the, the, the downloads as I call them, you know, oh, reach out to Scott and, and pitch this project to him or hey, um, you really need to take some time off. Like, Mm. I think we get these messages all the time and we don't listen or, hey, you really need to leave this unhealthy relationship and you hear it and it starts (laughs) to get louder and clearer, but then your ego mind says, well, where are you going to live? Or you're going to have to start over or all of those things come up, but be willing to let in the guidance and support that's always available to you. And, and and, and take a leap of faith and, and take the risk and stretch your comfort zone as I outline and, and step one and really Dude. start to um, allow life to be a bit more juicy for you yes. and, and really help you expand and grow. Yes. And so let's get into your coaching a little bit. Um, what do you think then makes a great coach? I think a great coach is someone who listens not just to what is being said, but what isn't being said, kind of that metadata, a great coach focuses only on the client's agenda. They're not bringing their agenda. They're not projecting. They're not giving advice. That's a misconception. I think once you've been working with the client for a while, you can ask permission or say, Hey, Scott, may I share what's coming up for me? And not even to tell you what to do, but just say, what I'm hearing you say, Scott, is that you really need to leave this job. Love is that it. what you're experiencing? So putting it back on you because you have all the answers. And I think it's amazing the transformation that can occur when we just shut up and let people <laughs> discover for yes. themselves. There's an acronym called WAIT, which is why am I talking? And this is not just for coaching. Share this gift with your loved ones. Share it with the clerk at the grocery store and just let people be seen heard and acknowledged. Love it. That is fantastic. That is weight. That is on our agenda. Put that on, Donnie. (laughs) I love this. I love this. So when you're starting to work with, say, a one-to-one client, maybe you're in the discovery period, is there any secret sauce, if you don't mind sharing? I know it's so cliche, secret sauce, but is there any secret sauce that you have to maybe help them initially find their blind spot? I think it's Again, I tune into my intuition. That's my superpower. And I can kind of sense like, wow, this man is saying that he's fine and this is going well, but I'm sensing that he's about to crumble and crack, Mm. which, which scares me, especially with my background. Um, And so again, it's 
when people answer, pausing and letting the conversation breathe, because in that pause, the person will continue to talk. So they might say, everything's great. And, you know, I'm looking forward to this promotion and then just give it a beat. And then a lot of times they'll say, but you know, I don't even know if I still want to work at this organization. I'm not getting along with my boss. I'm not in alignment with the values of this company. And so, mm-hmm. so, and so say, say more about that. Tell me more again, letting the conversation breathe and expand. And you do yes. that through p- pausing, just love pause. that. Yes. Listen, pause and listen with all your senses, not just your ears, but the rest of them to so pick up on them. Like you said, the nonverbal cue. So when you're starting still working, we'll say in the discovery kind of period, is there any good question that you wish they would ask you, but never do during this mm-hmm. time? That's a great question. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm so upfront and I think all of my materials that they, they read before we even get on the call, they kind of know what they're getting into, mm-hmm. but I'm happy to answer, you know, or for them to say, why do you think coaching is so valuable? Why do you yes. think it works? And I've got a great answer for that because I've had a coach, many coaches. I started my first coach. I was 23, uh-huh. she changed my life. And I, I still work with a coach. Um, right. All the coaches do. Right. right. So um, I think maybe if they could say, Hey, what would make me a great client? And I would right. say, thank you for asking, show up with a topic, come with energy, come with the willingness to be self-aware and to go deep and to not pretend and to let it all hang out and let it rip. This That's is, a- as I, I see my clients, this is a no <laughs> pretend zone. Let's just be real. And I think they are real because I'm, I'm so candid for better or worse right. um, that I think then they feel safe to be their real selves. You know, I think I'm quite a bit older than you, but I think that we were like detached as twinsies somewhere down the line because you, you and I think and speak the same way. So let me ask you this. Have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Yes. Okay. Let's get in that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go okay. back to the competitive 21 year old you're always competitive but like the 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 competing person the 21 year old Kate Ackman I don't know if it's Ackman but let's go back to 21 year old Kate is there any good knowledge nuggets that we call them here at Time to Shine today any good knowledge nuggets you would drop on the 21 year old Kate to maybe help her shorten her learning curve level up and blast through Mm. I would tell her to block out the noise and to listen to that voice within that is powerful. I would, speaking of powerful, remind her how powerful she is and that she can do anything that she decides is important enough. You can achieve anything you deem worry, uh, worthy and keep going. But what came to me instantly, and maybe because I've got Kobe Bryant's Mamba Mentality book sitting right behind me, I feel his spirit around a lot. It's so tragic what happened there. And yes. I feel like Kobe says that his spirit says that to me all the time. And he was a pro at blocking out the noise and the nonsense and focusing at the task at hand. And I I want everyone to be like Seabiscuit, the racehorse and and put on (laughs) your blinders and run your own race. Love that movie too. I love the story behind Seabiscuit. So let's talk about your dash. How do you want your dash? Remember that little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and death date on your tombstone. How do you want Kate's dash remembered? I, Kate was a woman who made everybody feel better in her presence. Yes. And and even outside of your presence, I think, Mm -hmm. because you're going to have your clients and even the people you come in contact with leave feeling better. That's awesome. I love that you were concise and very convicted with that. So then what do you think people misunderstand the most about Kate? Um, I think there's this, this misconception in our society at whole that if you look a certain way, make a certain amount of money, if you're on TV, you went to the fancy schools that must be nice to be you, you don't have problems, what do you know? And I think that's why people are shocked when I get up on stage and I look a certain way and I talk about the love of my life jumping off a bridge and people are like, wait, what? And then it's that kind of icky statement of, I didn't think someone like you would experience something like that. What does Mm. that even mean? And I think just getting up on stage, talking about a successful career and that I was filled with turmoil, anxiety, insecurity, self-doubt. And I think people are just, it's unexpected. And um, I think people 
because I am so joyful and, and, and polished and put together, um, that they don't understand how sensitive and raw and, and bleeding my heart is behind the scenes and, um, just how much I care and, and how, wow. how wow. human I am. And, um, yeah, I think sometimes it doesn't match up because I definitely get judged and labeled. I mean, I'm sure, a, sure. A, a tall blonde, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, with very big blonde hair and curvy and all of that. And, um, but you know, behind the scenes, I, I resonate more with like a mother Teresa. I just want to like love everybody and I'm certainly not on her level, but I just want to love and help everybody. Um, I appreciate you saying that. It's true too. I mean, you, I, I can see where people would have that. I don't want to call it misconception, but maybe that first, that first thought. So then what would keep Kate up at night? Mm. I like last night I was, um, missing my loves, my angels who have crossed over and, mm. um, you know, being in a good place with it in terms of they're always around, but I just think there's so much sadness and tragedy in our world. I think our society is at an all time sick and that, that does keep me up at night. It literally breaks my heart. And I have to consciously unsubscribe from that and turn off the phone and get off of the trending topics on Twitter because it literally breaks yeah. my heart and takes me out. Yeah. Um, I want to be aware and know what's going on so I can play my, my part in the solution. But um, the, the state of the world does trouble me, but that's why I'm so passionate about doing these inner exercises because we do have the power to show up and, and transform the we vibration do. of the world. Wow. That's strong. So let's get back in that DeLorean, but this time with Doc Brown. Remember where he said, where we're going, we don't need roads. Where are we, where are we in five years, Kate? Smiling. God willing, where are we in five years? Yeah, we're, we're alive. We're smiling. We're happy. We are helping even more people. And I think we are in a place of making spiritual fitness more mainstream and that people yes. are working out their inner muscles and they're aware of the importance of this, just like they're aware of the importance of exercising their physical muscles. Love that. So much of that needs, especially in this day and age. I mean, both muscles need to be flexed, you know? Um, so then let's, I, let's take out anything electronic out of this question. No cell phones, no computers, nothing. What are three things that Kate can't live without? Hmm. I think my journal and my, my pen, something to write with. Um, animals, my parents, golden doodle just came to mind. Animals are so soothing and healing and just pure love and joy. Yeah. And I, I can't live without deep, meaningful conversation and connection, like what we're doing right now. And that's why this lights me up because we were talking before and we're both exhausted. We've had a lot going on. <laughs> and have. when I show up for interviews like this and I'm tired, I, I say, you know, focus on connecting with the host mm -hmm. in a meaningful way and being present. Right, and everything right. else takes care of itself. And I think that's such an important reminder to anybody, whatever you have to do with driving the kids to school, the big meeting, whatever, show up, be present, be present yes. and focus on connecting with the person or task at hand. The rest will take care of itself. And I love that you said that, that you need to be present in any situation, no matter what your energy level is. Um, at least to the best of your ability. And I know you, like you said, you and I have both, both been through a couple things here. Um, so without a doubt. So what is Kate's definition of a life well lived? A life well lived is where you are showing up like you mean it. You have the courage to be not just that polished, put together person that you present to the world, but you're loving and honoring and embracing that messy person behind the scenes who's <laughs> just trying to keep it all together. He or she is lovable and relatable and, and so inspiring. So that is such an awesome answer, man. The, the, that, that, that's amazing. Like love who you are, no matter the sitch, right? And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And squad, this has just been awesome. I have pages and pages of notes and I hope that you do as well, but we're going to take, we're going to take Kate through our leveling up lightning round. Just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Hey, hey, time to shine today. Podcast varsity squad. We are back with my good friend, Kate Ekman, the author of the full spirit workout. Um, also Kate Ekman TV. You can find her there. Everything will be in the show notes, but Kate, I'm going to take you through our leveling up lightning round. You and I could talk literally, and I'm sure we will one day an hour on each one of these questions, <laughs> but, but you got five seconds with no explanations and all of them can be answered that way. You ready to rock? Let's do it. Let's do it. What is the best leveling up advice Kate's ever received? Keep going. 
Yes. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Sit and stare time. Yes, I love it. Other than Kate Ackman TV and the fullspiritworkout.com and of course, time to shine today.com, my shameless plug. What website does Kate go to to level up? Oh gosh. Uh, um, I don't have an answer. We'll say Google or YouTube. Okay, one great, of those two is great. good. So you see me, I'm in my doldrums. I'm kind of walking around and just not, you, you think Fergie has bad energy, you know, other than the full spirit workout book, what book are you handing me? A Return to Love. Oh, really? I love that. You're the first, I, I know the book and you're the first one that ever said that's beautiful. What's Kate's most commonly used emoji? The kissy one. Love it. Love it. What was your New Year's resolution? I don't do those. Beautiful. Chess or checkers? Checkers. Ah, me too. <laughs> Keep it simple. What's your favorite charity and organization you like to give your time or money to? American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you so much. Last one. You can elaborate a little bit on this one, but what's the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? Oh, gosh. It's a toss-up between 80s and 90s. I have my, <laughs> my serious XM radio, and it's always 80s on 8 and 90s on 9. I know. Me too, dude. We are... D definitely brother and sister from a different mist. I swear that that's crazy. I, I was, you know, I graduated in 1990 uh, from high school. So it's like, I have the, um, grew up in the eighties with a big hair. Don't care. I mean, rap came in, you know, the U2 invasion, you know, Duran Duran. It's like, we have all that in the nineties. You had the grunge and the garage bands. It's like those two decades are it for me. I love it. You know, I love it. So Kate, where can we find you? Go ahead and log on to Kate Ekman, K-A-T-E-E-C-K-M-A-N.tv or the fullspiritworkout.com. And I'm Kate Ekman on all the social medias. I would love to connect with you there and keep the conversation going. And Squad, all of that will be in the show notes. But let's talk a little bit about the Full Spirit Workout the book, which we have a good, we will have a, a giveaway. And if you're watching here is the book that you'll actually be having. It was so nicely signed by my great friend, Kate, to you. And let's talk a little bit about it. Where's the origins about it? And then what really moved you to write it? Yeah, it was the, the inspiration, my two loved ones that I, I lost to suicide and really to anyone who is struggling with mental health, which as I've discovered this past year is really and truly everyone. So I wanted to give people the tools for a better way of living, really exercise our mental, emotional and spiritual muscles the way that mm. We do are supposed to exercise our physical muscles for optimum health and to keep going. So I'm just passionate about a different way of living and really making this a, a mainstream concept because I and everybody who has done these exercises has just experienced the, the results and benefits. So it is like physical exercise. You can't just show up at the gym and your cute outfit and expect to be fit. Your personal <laughs> trainer sadly cannot do your pushups and pull-ups for you. Right. But the good news about that is then the results are yours. And, and as you start to feel more fit and toned on the inside, your, your body and your spirit really starts to crave these exercises. And then the best part is you naturally become the person who can achieve your cherished goals and attract the, the people, the experiences, the opportunities, rather than striving or forcing or controlling, you're getting the emails. People are coming to you because you've become that person. Does right. that make sense? Yes. Yeah, you have. And you started on the inside. The spirit's on the inside, period. And you start leveling up the spirit, flexing that muscle. And it, it works out because it's almost like subconsciously you're forced for lack of a better term, to become that exterior person as well, because your interior is taken care of and you're taking care of that. And I love that. And that, that's, this has just been fantastic. And Kate, can you leave, do me a huge favor and leave us with one last knowledge nugget that we can take with us, internalize and take action on? Yeah, I, I think a lot of people face uh, rejection or they feel overlooked or miscared for by a lot of people, even people who love them or claim to love them. And what I want to remind you is that our spirit, that you're now going to be exercising consistently, our spirit can't be rejected or criticized or overlooked or miscared for. And so I want you to remember that you have this powerhouse inside of you that no one can ever take away from you or diminish. And so let's just shine that a little brighter and, and let's lead from that place rather than the ego, rather from the limitations of the external world. And, and I promise you, you will start to see different results. You'll have a whole new um, group of friends or colleagues or people coming into your life to support you. And that said maybe it is time to let some people fall away and make space for the yes. new 
I love that. And, and th- this has just been so enlightening, Kate. Thank you so much. You know, and squad, I, I literally have pages of notes here, you know, and if you don't believe me, it's front and back. And, you know, she was somebody that she, Kate's someone that doesn't want you to be validated by your externals. You know, she wants you to really train your emotional and spiritual muscles. She has an exercise. It's a lot like my box breathing, uh, but basically it's sit and stare, you know, ask yourself, how are you? What do you need? And listen, listen, listen for those downloads and then put them into action. You know, allow your life to be juicy. Have fun with your life. A great coach is going to listen with all their senses, not just their ears, but their eyes. She's going to pick up on nonverbals, which is fantastic. But the huge thing is the client's agenda. It's not the coach. If you're working with a coach, bring a topic and be ready to be all in, just like my friend Kate is all in. And we had an acronym of WAIT. Why am I talking? And practice that. Don't talk. Listen. And you can pick up on so many things, make so many new friends, and just have a lot of fun with it. She wants you to pause and let the conversation breathe, whether you're speaking to somebody or it's, if it's during your sit and stare time. You know, pause and let the conversation breathe, and the answers and downloads will come to you. You know, she would have told her younger self, you know, to block out the noise and listen to her intuition. Remember how powerful you are. And if you have questions, like my good friend Leah Woodford will say, get your asking gear. Ask the people, surround yourself with the right person, people like Kate, that can help you get to the next level. You know, she'll be remembered as somebody that makes everybody feel better in, in, in and out of her presence. And then show this last one, I can't even read because I was writing so fast, but show up like you mean it. Love and embrace your messy self as well. And then just remember, lastly, that your spirit can't be rejected or overlooked. No one can take anything away from you. Lead from within, not your ego. And that's exactly what my really good friend Kate does. She levels up her health. She levels up her wealth. She's so giving, outpouring so much. She's earned a varsity letter here. That Not that she needs another one, but she earned a varsity letter here at Time to Shine today. And we thank you so, so much for coming on, Kate. I'm blessed. And I can't wait to collaborate with you in the future. I just, this was amazing. I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much. Big thank you to your listeners. We, we love you. You're very welcome. Love your guts. Talk soon.